Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be discussing my July hits and misses. Um, it's been like three or four months since I've actually done a favorites video, so I'm not gonna lie to you, some of these products I've been using for the past couple months, not just for the month of July, but I did wanna give them a mention. They've been awesome, I've been loving them. So without further ado, if you're interested in seeing my hits and misses for the past few months, then let's get started. So I guess we can start with the misses and I only have one. Um, and it's this Hello Fab um, Pores Be Gone Matte Primer by First Aid Beauty. So I actually used this in a First Impressions Test It Out Tuesday video. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a series on my channel called Test It Out Tuesday, which is usually when I do either kind of a one brand first impressions or test out a bunch of stuff that I've been collecting. So I did test this out in one of my videos and primers are really difficult because you can get a good first impression, but primers to me, the importance is how they wear. That's the whole point of primers. Yeah, your makeup can look great upon application and you think it's a great primer, but it doesn't wear well. And that's my issue with this one. Um, it says that it's a matte primer. It's oil-free, safe for sensitive skin. So this to me, I was like, hell yeah, this sounds amazing. Not to mention you get 1.7 fluid ounces. What a great deal. But to me, this just made me greasier throughout the day. This did no, like, no mattifying whatsoever. This this was not matte to me at all. Um, so it's kind of a, like, moisturizer consistency. Um, and when you first put it on, it literally just feels like a face lotion. It does do a little bit of pore filling, but it doesn't feel silicone-y like the Smashbox one or anything like that smells really good it smells like cucumbers um but it doesn't make my makeup last at all this made me really really greasy and i have not oily skin but i think i have combo skin and lately i've gotten my skin to the point where i can wear almost any foundation i have pretty much no issue whatsoever but this what what foundation did i try this with i've tried this with a few foundations um i've tried it with the Too faced born this way which usually gives me like a natural finish not like dewy I was a greasy mess and this just was a huge fail to me I don't I don't like anything about it I mean it smells good but it just it did absolutely nothing for me so this unfortunately was a miss so let us move on to our hits and starting with a primer again this is the cover FX gripping primer this is with firming Oh my god, I've been trying to get my hands on this for the longest time and I finally picked it up at Ulta. It was the last one. I was so excited. I've been like stalking the shelves trying to find this. I don't know why I didn't just order it online. But it's like a jelly texture that like smooths everything and it says it creates a glass-like finish on the skin but it grips your makeup. I would compare this kind of to the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. I'm really, really loving primers like that lately. Like I said, normally I go for something more mattifying, but these that just let your skin breathe, but still create a nice tacky base where your makeup can really adhere, lasts a really, really long time. I think this is worth every penny. If you're looking for the effects of a mattifying primer that kind of preserves your makeup and makes you look flawless all day long, then I would definitely recommend this. It's not as drying as like my Makeup Forever, or any of those really, really mattifying primers, but I just, I'm really, really obsessed with this. This has been my go-to lately. Like I said, I have combo skin and I think it works phenomenally. I don't get greasy. It just, it keeps my makeup looking amazing. It looks like I applied it, at least my base, looks like I applied it at the end of the day when I use this. I think it's a phenomenal product. So next, I'm a little bit late to the bandwagon on this, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, and I am, I guess I was hesitant to try this because I just didn't understand what it did or what it is exactly. Um, so it says it's for a superstar youth glow. People were like, is it a highlighter? Is it a foundation? Is it a primer? Like, what are we doing here? And honestly, truthfully, I still don't know what it really is meant for, but I like to use it underneath my foundation or mixed in. I've actually used this on clients at well as well. It has a doe foot applicator. You get a ton of product and I kind of just use it in conjunction with my primers under my foundation or mixed in 
gives you a really, really beautiful look to your foundation if you kind of want to sheer it out or create something a little bit more glowy and dewy. I love this. It is a little bit of a thicker product. I have mine in the shade 4 medium just because I like to use it when I'm self-tanned. That's it right there. And honestly, I would not use this on top of foundation. I don't look at it as like a highlighter per se, but as you can see, it just gives you a really nice glow. So I really like this mix into foundation. Sometimes I find that if I use this underneath the foundation, the foundation will kind of just cover it up, especially if it's something full coverage like I normally gravitate towards. So I definitely love this mix in. I just do a few swipes with my foundation, pounce it in with a beauty blender, and you're good to go. So another Cover FX product that I've been loving, this is the Perfect Setting Powder. I think it's really, really amazing. I can't remember if I've mentioned this in a favorites video yet, but if I have, it must be good if I'm mentioning it twice. I really, really do love it. Actually, I'm pretty sure now that I'm saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned this, but I've been using it nonstop. This has completely replaced my Laura Mercier. Um, I just, I'm really, really obsessed with it. My Cody Airspun, I just think this is a great product. It doesn't make your skin look cakey. It doesn't suck the life out of your face. I think it's amazing. I don't bake with it. I'm not a huge baker lately. Um, I just prefer to dust this all over my face and it keeps me my, nice and matte, preserves my makeup perfectly. I've just been a really, really big fan of this. I think it works amazing with every foundation and every concealer I've tried it with this far. I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and I really appreciate the clean packaging. You get that kind of like plastic cover sieve, so you're not gonna make a huge mess. I've taken this with me on literally every trip I've been on in the past few months. This has gone with me, and this is pretty much all I've taken with me. Um, it's definitely a product that I trust, and it's, like kind of my go-to lately. If I need a setting powder, I just automatically reach for this one. So next up, I wanna talk about two eyeshadows and these are actually drugstore. I'm hoping that you guys can get your hands on them here. I actually picked these up when I was in Germany a few weeks ago and these are the Essence Melted Chrome Eyeshadows. It's actually what I'm wearing on my lid right now. I'm wearing this one called Iconic. This is 02 and then I have 06 Copper Me. You guys, these eyeshadows, oh my God. First of all, they're affordable as heck because they're essence. I'm gonna swatch this for you and you're just gonna be mind blown. First of all, it's so soft and creamy. I mean, just look at that. I mean, are we kidding? And they blend out like so nicely. Just look how pigmented. This is with no fix plus, no nothing. Like my eyes, I have no glitter glue or any. I literally just took a like eyeshadow shader brush and just like packed it on my lid and we're done. I don't know if they're in Ulta. I'm sure you could get them online. If you can get your hands on them, if you can hunt them down somewhere, I highly, highly recommend them. I just, they're so beautiful. I wish I got more, but from what I remember, the color selection was kind of like eh. So I need to go online and see if I can get a few more of these, but oh my God, they're just so beautiful. This is kind of like a cool toned champagne -y. oh my god it's just so beautiful this I would consider wearing for my wedding day like I think this is gonna be my new replacement shadow for brides I just think it's so so stunning this also if you don't pack it on as much it's a really really pretty eyeshadow topper you don't necessarily need to wear this on its own this one is a little bit more sheer it doesn't have as much as it's not as opaque as the copper one. So this one, if you blend it out, you get just a really pretty sparkle. I don't know if you can see that. And you can top almost any eyeshadow with it. And it's just so, so beautiful. I think these were like $3. Essence is so, so affordable. I just think these are such beautiful eyeshadows. I, uh, I just love them so much. You can use them with your finger, with your brush. They're literally amazing. They're just so creamy. and. When you swatch it, you feel how soft and just buttery and it's beautiful. I love it. I'm obsessed with these. If you can get your hands on them, do it. Like buy them all. I'm, I'm not joking. Next up, I have this Beauty Bay highlighting palette. This is called the Living My Best Light and this is the Brilliance one. There are two of them. This is Brilliance. I think there's one more. And these are kind of like all the pinky gold shades. Ooh talk about buttery and creamy. So my most used is probably strobe and charm. These two here, this one right here, I'm not going to lie. I don't really use, it's a little bit chunky and glittery, but I think these two are so, so beautiful. 
Um, this is strobe. It's kind of a more pinky highlight. Oh, so pretty. And then we'll go in with charmed, which is kind of like a champagne-y, just like neutral gold. Like these are Beauty Bay, I have just kind of discovered and fallen in love with. I think this palette was like $10. I love Beauty Bay because they carry a lot of products that you can't get in stores. You can't get from Ulta or Sephora. They carry a lot of unique brands and it is a UK based brand. So they have a lot of products that we can't get in the US. So I love browsing all their new products and stuff. The Beauty Bay brand, I so far have this and an eyeshadow palette and I've just been blown away. I think they're really, really amazing. Really great value, pigmented, creamy, blendable, just all around a great, great product. You can mix them together. You have a lot of wearable shades here and I usually gravitate towards a more gold or pinky highlight. So this is perfect for me. So I also have two hair products that I want to chat about with you guys. The first one is this Living Proof Full Dry Volume Blast. So I actually started out with the mini one of these because I have very thin hair. I don't know if you can tell, there's like a lot of texture spray and stuff in it right now. But I have, I have pretty thin hair, so I struggle with getting a lot of volume in my roots. So this has been a lifesaver. I normally rely on dry shampoo to kind of give me that fresh volume and like big, dirty, gritty hair because I just love that like messy, undone kind of look. And this I am obsessed with. First of all, it smells amazing. The scent, ooh, it's so good. And also this gives my hair volume without having to use mousse that can get crunchy or like harsh hairsprays. This just like a quick, like little and it's oh yes I love it it's so good you can even spray it in like the mids of your hair but I like to use this in my roots if you're looking for something that's not as gritty as dry shampoo and kind of give your hair a break because I know dry shampoo can actually make your hair dirtier and therefore it gets greasy faster all that kind of stuff so if you have clean hair and you don't want to use dry shampoo quite yet I try and hold out until like day three I would really, really recommend this. It smells amazing. It's really easy to use. It's it's pretty foolproof. And you don't get like crunchy or greasy roots. This is my go-to lately. I can't do my hair without this. So the second spray I want to talk about is actually this Bumble and Bumble, the Thickening Dry Spun Texture Spray. So I am a big fan of texture sprays. I love them so much. I just have an issue with the product buildup and how dry they can make my hair. This one though, I think is a pretty, pretty, I, I would say this is a winner. It creates instant volume and holds airy texture all day. I think it does last a pretty long time. I have this in my hair also right now and I just really like how it gives me that grittiness and dirtiness and texture that I love but it doesn't make my hair feel really crunchy or dry. As you can see, it's still pretty shiny and this is third day hair for me. So I think that it's really, really good. You can build this up as much as you want. This has kind of replaced just like using hairspray. I'll just curl my hair and use this. I think this has really, really great hold and it still gives your hair that like bounce and it doesn't suck the life out of it, which is kind of my issue, especially with color treated hair being blonde. It's very easy to see dryness, split ends. Your hair can kind of look a little bit dull especially if it's processed a lot like mine, but this still keeps and maintains all of the shine. I'm really, really happy with it. I used to have a ton of products. I am a product junkie, but I was able to replace a lot of those with just these guys. So I'm really excited about that. Cuts my hair routine down to minutes, like 10 minutes tops. And I think it looks pretty cute. So I just wanted to touch on some skincare products that I've been loving this month as well. So this is the Kiehl's Creme Decor. This is the Soy Milk and Honey Whipped Body Butter. Oh, this is good, you guys. The scent of this, I think it smells like oatmeal and like, oh, it's so good. The Soy Milk and Honey is like a very accurate description. It smells just like comforting and cozy and creamy and delicious. This has been the only thing I've been using on my body lately. This is with Shea and Jojoba Butters. Jo Jojoba, is that how you say it? Jojoba? I think that's right. 
Um, this is a pretty penny. I think it's like $45 for this tub, but it's lasted me a really, really long time. I've had this for like five months, I think, but I've just been using it like religiously pretty much every day. It preserves my self tan really, really nicely. This is from like a week ago, two weeks ago, and I think it's looking really good. It's not breaking up or getting crazy. It's like a whipped texture. It's not thick. It almost has like a moussey whipped texture, like whipped cream kind of. I don't know if that's a good description. I love the texture of this. It's not thick. It soaks into your skin super, super quickly. I've used it on really hot days and I've been totally fine. It hasn't like melted off me or like I'm not like sliding around, you know, that feeling. Um, so yeah, I've just really, really been loving this. So the next thing I actually want to talk about is this Duval. I hope I'm saying the brand right. Duval. Um, this is the Radius Spin Care System and this was actually sent to me. Um, before this, I'm not gonna lie, I was not a big facial brush kind of gal. I did used to use the Vanity Planet one. I was really into that for a while and it had like the nice little heads that you could change out, all that kind of stuff. I was using it pretty religiously and then I just stopped using it. And that was about a year ago. So this brand reached out to me and asked if they could send me their skincare system. And honestly, this brush is if you've seen the Vanity Planet one compared to this, just feeling it, such better quality. This, <laughs> so much better. I don't feel like it's going to electrocute me. I don't know. With the Vanity Planet one, I just thought like the plastic was really cheap. Water was going to get in, the, in there and it was just going to like zap me one day. But this is a really, really great product. I've been using it for about a month now. Um, I don't know if I've seen a difference in like pores or anything like that, but I do think it does a really, really good job deep cleaning. I like to use it with a cleanser to remove makeup, anything like that. And I find when I go in with my toner afterwards, there is less product on there. So it does do a really good job of removing everything. And you get four interchangeable accessories. So I actually have not used any of these other um, accessories with it yet. I've just been using kind of the generic cleansing head, but this is really cool because this is a body exfoliator, so like a body buffer. This is really great to get off any self tan or just exfoliate your body really well if you have any dead skin in like hard to reach areas like on your back, on your chest. I know my self tan gets a little funky on my chest um, after it's been on for a long time and I'm trying to get it off. So I think this is really, really cool. Um, and then you also have the cleansing head like I had on here before and then you have the exfoliator and I would use this maybe like once or twice a week and then last but not least you have a pumice stone which I think is really really cool so this is a really multi-purpose tool the only issue I find with it is it does not have like a carrying case or anything to keep it clean and sanitized that's one thing I did really enjoy about the Vanity Planet one is it did come in nice little packaging, like a nice little box so you could kind of store it in there. And then of course with facial brushes, you need to be very careful of is any bacteria. You can actually do more damage by not cleansing these heads. You really need to make sure that even though they are synthetic bristles, you are getting them really, really clean because with water, of course, we know bacteria can grow there and it's just a yucky mess. Especially if you're using these to take off your makeup, they do get pretty brown and dingy looking but after you're done washing your face just take some antibacterial soap rub it around in your hand and it'll come right out it's no big deal but I really think this is a great product I think it's much higher quality it does require a battery just so you know you place it in the bottom here um, but yeah I've been really really enjoying this so far and they did give me a coupon code for you guys to use. I am not making any money off of it. It's, it's just a code for you guys to use. Um, and I will leave it down in the description box below. But it is Excellent 2019. And it's going to save you 70, 70% off of a skincare brush. So if you're interested in getting a facial cleansing brush, I would really recommend this one. So last but not least, I have some like fashion accessory items that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So I went to Nashville for my bachelorette party and of course we had to go to Uncommon James and I picked up some jewelry pieces from there that I'm just obsessed with. Like I think they're so, so beautiful and I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily worth like that hefty 
safety of a price tag. I did put the tag back on some of these just so I could tell you the prices. Um, but I did get this like coin necklace. Come on, guy. I always wear like gold layering necklaces and this one actually sits a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see. I will try and link below which one this is exactly. They all have like fun names um, and I don't know them all off the top of my head. Um, and then I also got this choker which I think is so so pretty and the price of this one is $54. $4. I think this is called the reed. I'm pretty sure but it's really cool the, the chain is just really really unique It has different sizes on there And I just think it's really pretty while still being very dainty and then we all know I love my hoops Like I'm pretty sure that's all I wear like ever. I'm obsessed with hoop earrings So I purchased these because I just thought they were so different and I'm obsessed with them There are these like triangle hoop earrings and now I'm pretty sure these were like 70 bucks, which is absurd for a pair of earrings, but I've been wearing them nonstop. So I feel like I'm getting my money's worth out of them. And they do feel like pretty good quality. They don't feel like they're going to bend or anything, but I just think they're so fun and unique. And I just, I wear these all the time. So like, I really do love them. I love them, especially with your hair like up so you can really see the shape. If you can find a dupe for them, I would say go for it. I don't know if you need to spend $70 on a pair of hoop earrings. But I just think they're so unique and I haven't seen a pair like this anywhere else. So that was my little like gift to myself. So last but not least, you guys know I've been on this kind of health kick. I've been doing keto and I've really been trying to get my act together, especially now that I have so much more time before the wedding. I really want to look and feel my best. So that includes me working out more frequently. I've been very proud of myself. I've been doing really, really good. And so I treated myself to some new workout shoes. Obviously these are two separate pairs, they don't go together. Um, but these are the Nike Free Metcon 2s, I wanna say. I will link them down below again. I think these are like glacial gray or something like that. And then these are the like sunrise pink or something, but they're basically white with like these like orange and pink ombre details. They're super, super cute. And aside from being really, really cute, they are a very, very functional shoe. So I have the original Metcons that I used for lifting. They're very, very flat, like so flat, like almost like Converse, but more stiff. And I really liked them, but I just found that they weren't versatile enough for me. I've been trying to switch up my workouts a little bit. Aside from lifting, I'm trying to incorporate more quick movements, cardio, hit, stuff like that. And I'm not trying to change my shoes in the middle of the gym, put on running shoes. It's just too much for me. So I really like these because as you can see, they're so much more flexible. I should probably get my other Metcons to kind of show you the comparison, but you can look it up on Nike. It tells you the whole spiel and everything, but these are just so bendy and flexible. I find that these are so much more versatile. They give me the flat support I need for squatting and things like that, but I can do quick little sprints in them. I can do burpees, I can do lunges, whatever it may be. So I did purchase two pair of these. I think these are $120 a pair but I really, really love them. Normally in my sneakers, I am a size seven. These do fit a little bit snug. I think all Metcons fit smaller than normal. So I did purchase a seven and a half in these. So if you are interested in these, I would recommend going to a store to try them on or sizing up half a size, I think. I don't think you need to go full size. It depends on how tight you like your sneakers. I like mine moderately tight. But um, yeah, so I ended up with a seven and a half in these and I like them because you don't actually tie them. They're kind of just an elasticy like sock situation. You just like slip your foot in there and then you have laces to tighten them if you want. I've done pretty much all of my workouts in these and they're still pretty clean. The only thing I would not recommend running like long distance in these. These are not meant to be running shoes. These are like cross training quick workout kind of shoes. If you like Metcons, but they're just a little bit too flat or not giving you enough, I would definitely recommend checking these out. They are very versatile, comfy, and you can do a little bit more in them. Alrighty, you guys, that is going to conclude my recent beauty, health, fashion, accessory, whatever favorites 
for the past few months as well as the month of July. I know I always say this, but I am gonna try and get back on schedule with doing a monthly favorites every month. They are some of my favorite videos to do just because I can quickly share products with you that I have been obsessed with. So if you have any monthly favorites, let me know what they are down below. What have you been obsessed with this month? And if there's anything you think I need to try, I am happy to do so. Leave that down in the comments as well. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. Bye.